it wasn't until I think it was April, April, 2009, I got a call from my boss, the one who had actually told me I was going to be let go. And he calls me back and he goes, Hey Pat, like, how are you? I hope things are okay. And I'm like, yeah, actually things are going pretty good. Um, but he wanted to offer me a position at a new firm that he set up. He brought a few of my coworkers with him, the same clients that I was working with. He took them with him too. So I would just come right back on board with the, with the jobs that I was familiar with. And then he also offered me a corner office, a pay raise slightly, and then also a year's rent for free to come back to Irvine, California and to, to be with him and, and my coworkers. And it wasn't three seconds until I said, you know what? No, no, thank you. I'm good. And then after that conversation, I thought about my answer and I was like, am I crazy? Like, that's an amazing offer. This is Love Your Work and I'm David Cadavy. I spent the past 10 years building my life and work around what I love. On this show, I share what I'm learning along the way. One of the key things that I did early on in my career as an independent creator was set up passive revenue streams. If it wasn't for these passive revenue streams, I never would have been able to free up the time to explore. So I likely never would have come up with my first book, Design for Hackers. And I probably never would have found the time to make this show. I looked at the passive revenue as a way to explore other things. I didn't want to make it a part of my personal brand, so to speak. In fact, one of my passive revenue streams was an online dating advice blog that I wrote under a pseudonym. Our guest today, Pat Flynn, has a different approach. He is all about the passive revenue. He's been setting up passive revenue streams since 2008. He started with a training ebook for an architecture exam, and he's got a security guard training website, courses for marketing a food truck business, podcast playing software for podcast websites, so many more things, including his latest book, Will It Fly?, which is a Wall Street Journal bestseller and which shares what he's learned about knowing whether a new business endeavor is worth following. Pat has been sharing his income reports every month since he started. These days, he's earning close to a quarter of a million dollars a month with all the businesses that I mentioned and more, including his extremely popular podcast, Smart Passive Income. In this conversation, we're going to talk about how did Pat start making money by sharing what he was learning? You can learn a lot about why you don't have to be a so-called expert to help people. And Pat went from the well-established profession of architecture to making money online. So what sort of leaps did he have to make to transition from a profession that was so important to his identity? And how does Pat think about transparency? What was it that gave him the idea to start sharing his income reports online? Love Your Work Elite members, check out the uncut bonus content where Pat gets into the details of self-publishing two books and growing a podcast with a million downloads a month. And notice at the end of this conversation, Pat tells you to say hi to him on Twitter. Please do say hello to him. He's on at Pat Flynn. That's one T and two N's. Let him know it was worth his while for coming on the show. Here's Pat Flynn. I'm here with Pat Flynn. And Pat, I was looking at your, I was looking back at your income reports, your very first income report in uh, October 2008, roughly nine years ago. You made about $8,000. And that was when you launched your, your ebook for lead training, which we can get into what that is. But it said that two weeks later, you, you launched Smart Passive Income. So I was curious, it seemed like that happened so quickly. When you first started making that money off of that ebook, did you know that you were going to start making a lot of passive income? How did that happen so quickly? Well, I had built the website, the lead exam website, which is at greenexamacademy.com. I had built that in a way that was fashioned so that it could become as, as automated as possible. I got a lot of inspiration from Tim Ferriss and his book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which came out just a year before. That was kind of my muse moving forward. And so I had built the site in a way that allowed me to uh, generate an income through people buying this ebook, a study guide to help people pass the lead exam. And so it was set up to generate passive income. I had no idea if it was going to work or not, but I had just built these systems and put them in place. And of course, uh, as you had mentioned earlier, it did very well that first month in October of 2008. But the reason Smart Passive Income came about was because I wanted to answer everybody's questions during that month that were coming in, which were, Pat, how are you doing this? How are you making money? How are you writing this ebook? How are you actually generating an income online? And there's there were a lot of websites out there kind of halfway teaching that stuff, but it would always lead to some sort of product that you'd have to buy or a course that you had to purchase. Um, so for Smart Passive Income, I was like, hey, 
I'm doing really well with this with this lead exam stuff. I'm just gonna create smartpassiveincome.com to show people how to do this because this world was unknown to me until I got laid off earlier that year. And I knew there were other people who needed something that they could do, whether it's on the side or full-time like myself after getting let go. Uh, and I just wanted to be that person to share everything, everything that I was doing to build greenexamacademy.com, everything that I was doing right, everything that I wish I had done differently and just what I was learning along the way. So that, it was kind of a, it seems like a quick transition from uh, the lead exam stuff to smart passive income, but it wasn't really a transition. It was just sort of an add-on because the lead exam stuff was already on autopilot and had all this information and inspiration from all the success I had that I just wanted to share it. And the smart passive income was born. And so to give some background on the, on the lead thing, I happen to know because I worked in architecture for a while. The lead is a, a certification for uh, being an architect who can build buildings uh, uh, to, to get lead certified, showing that they're sustainable in their use of electricity or in their use of resources and things like that. And there's an exam for that. And you were basically, if I correct me if I'm wrong, you were studying for that exam and then you were just sharing what you were learning as you went on that blog. Yeah, actually in 2007, I started studying for that exam and I quickly learned that it was going to be one of the toughest exams I would ever take because in the first practice test I took, I got a 25% and you need like an 85 to 90% to pass. And I just felt terrible because I had gotten perfect grades throughout school. So I was like, okay, I need something to help me pass this exam. I actually walked away from it for a while, but then came back to it knowing that it would help me with, with my career. And to help me study, I actually had built a website to help me keep track of my notes. And that's really what it was. It wasn't actually meant to generate an income. It was meant to allow myself to keep track of my notes because uh, I was traveling a lot and it just was easier to go and visit a website. I knew how to set up a blog as a content management system and the way that the exam was laid out. It just made sense to have different blog posts for those different chapters that I had to memorize. And it allowed me to share it with a couple of my coworkers too. I thought it also that by creating this resource, it would help impress my bosses uh, because I was helping everybody else in the firm with this exam, that it would help me advance my career in architecture. Well, after I passed that exam in March of 2008, I kind of just let that site sit there. I had a number of posts on there that were related to the exam. And then when I got let go, and then I discovered this thing called online business, and I actually found an example of somebody who was making six figures a year teaching people how to pass the project management exam or the PM exam. That was my light bulb moment. Hey, I have this website. Maybe I can actually turn it into something that can actually help other people. And maybe, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Maybe I can actually turn into a business for myself. I had no idea what I was doing, but the first thing I did was actually, I put a tool on the website to help me keep track of the traffic that I was hopefully gonna get because there was no reason for me to keep track of traffic before. I wasn't building it for the public. I was building it just for, for organizational purposes for myself and my, uh, my team at my work. Um, and then the next day, thousands of visitors had registered and I thought something was wrong. I thought it was maybe the thousands of visits that I, you know, made on that website, but it didn't even include that people from around the world were visiting my site. And I, I quickly understood how they found me because Google analytics shows you I was found via Google. So Google started ranking a lot of my stuff at the top of the search engines. And then in addition to that, I was getting links and uh, traffic coming from links on different sites. People who were blogging about architecture found my site randomly and then started linking to it as a resource. It was getting linked to in various forums where people were discussing the lead exam. And the one that surprised me the most was that it was being linked to within United States Green Building Council chapter websites in various states around the US. Um, so it became this resource. I turned on the comments. I started answering questions and I sort of became known and seen as an expert in the space. Even though I wasn't an expert, I, I really wasn't. I barely passed the exam, but because I was the one that was actually publishing this information and consolidating it so it was easy for people to memorize and I was helping people pass, I became known as the expert and my website and resource just started to get shared around. And you mentioned that you had al you already knew how to set up a content management system. What was it? How was it that you ended up learning that beforehand? Yeah, I had just built a blog just for personal reasons because all a bunch of other people were doing it and they were just sharing like what they were doing that day. I had started on a platform called um, Zanga, Z-A-N-G-A, -A, which is no longer around, but that's kind of how I understood that what like a blog could do. And I just had this kind of wacky idea to, to kind of turn that kind of content management system that was normally used for like daily journaling into something that could help me pass the exam. Um, and that's when I also learned about WordPress and there was, there was a lot of free resources and obviously there still are about how to get a WordPress website up and running really fast. And so that's, that's what I did. And I had this like janky free theme cause I didn't want to spend any uh, money on it. 
and uh, it worked. It, it just, that's what taught me that, you know, just you got to get something up and doesn't matter how it looks. You just got to start writing and publishing content. That's how you can get found. I think it's so fascinating that you were doing it to share your own study progress and you were sharing that with your coworkers, but then there happened to be thousands of other people looking at it and you didn't even know. How, how was it that you happened to not have the comments turned on? Was that just by default that they weren't on? I turned them off because I didn't want anybody to comment on them and I wanted people to come talk to me at work. Again, it was built specifically ah. for people at work. So the comments were off. I deleted all the sort of default uh, comments that were on there. Um, and I just, I had it up again. I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't understand keyword research. I didn't understand how Google worked. I mean, if I was smart, I would, I would have been like, Ooh, well maybe I can get, you know, other people around the world to find this too. But I literally just built it for myself and for my coworkers because giving them a URL and a website was much easier than passing them copies of my notes. And plus, you know, it was a lead exam website. It was about sustainability. I wanted to remove paper in this whole, in this whole equation. So you have this blog, it's getting a lot of traffic, you pass the exam, it, and and then you get laid off like summer of 2008, right? What was that like? Well, again, I didn't realize that I had all this traffic coming in until later after I was laid off, but the layoff was probably the most depressing time in my life. I had just proposed to my girlfriend, so we were planning this wedding and getting ready for that, and then all of a sudden this path that I thought was going to be very secure. I was doing everything I could to secure this position and grow in the world of architecture um, to get it just taken away from me just like that was tough. And, you know, I saw signs that it could happen, but I thought I was going to be kept on because I was the youngest person in the firm to be a job captain. And I thought they were going to keep just like a core a group of people. And I thought I was going to be a part of that, but nope, I was let go on June 17th, 2008. And the first thing that I did was you know, of course I went through all the emotions. I, I got angry, I got upset, I got sad, I got I worried. Um, but the first thing I did was I went back to my desk after I was told and I started to call every single architecture firm that I had known, every single engineering firm that I had ever worked with, every single friend from college that I knew who was working. And I found out quickly that they were getting laid off too. I just tried and begged for some sort of job in the architecture space, because that's all I knew. That's, that's what I had devoted five years of school to and what I wanted to do it with the rest of my life. And so I got home that day and I was upset. I was crying and my wife came in from her apartment because she heard that something was going on. And she came in and she saw me bawling um, and, and, and she consoled me and she told me that everything was gonna be okay. And that was huge to have her tell me that everything was gonna be okay. I mean, that was a big worry for me. I didn't know what my parents were gonna say. I didn't know what she was gonna say. She didn't sign up for this, um, but to hear her and, and know that she was gonna be there to support me no matter what was, was huge. Um, now, luckily I, I didn't get, permanently let go that day. I was told I was going to be let go, but I had a couple months to kind of figure things out because I was promoted recently to job captain, which means I had clients and they couldn't just let me go from those clients that day. They needed to, to sort of transition me out of those. And so I had a couple months, I moved back home with my parents. Uh, my fiance moved back home with her parents too. And I took the train every day to work, which was a two hour train ride uh, because that was the last bit of money I knew I was going to make. And I remember sitting on that train and getting so jealous of everybody who came in who had their briefcases and their laptops and their nice suits. And I would just would think to myself, wow, you are so lucky that you still have your job. You have no idea what I'm going through because I'm just left here trying to figure things out. And I went to school for architecture and I can't even get a job in architecture right now. Like moving back in with my parents, I'm a failure. And then I went through all of my playlist for my music and I just got over that really quickly. And then I found podcasts and that's really where it all started. I found and discovered podcasts and I found one in particular called Internet Business Mastery, where I heard an interview with this guy named Cornelius Fitchner, who runs a website teaching people how to pass the project management exam. And that's where the light bulb came off or, or went off for me. And I started to dive into this world of online business. And I do have to give credit and thanks to Jeremy and Jason, the hosts of Internet Business Mastery. They became my only shine of light during that time to give me hope and to teach me the ways. And so uh, I give him a lot of credit for helping me get my start there back in 2008. So you're listening to those podcasts as you're commuting to work on the train from your parents' house, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And so at what point do you decide, oh, I could try to do something with this lead site that I have? Well, I, it was, it was right after that, listening to that interview. But again, I had no idea what I was doing, but that's when I turned the comments on. That's when I put the traffic uh, tracking tool on there. And then I started to add a lot more content on there that I thought would be helpful specifically for other people who I didn't know 
that were around the world trying to pass this exam. So I added a lot of pages that were about me, about exam day and like what exam day was like. And those posts got picked up and shared rather quickly. Um, but it wasn't until I joined the course that was being offered by those guys over at Internet Business Mastery that things really started to take off. Because then I started to understand marketing and like what search engine optimization is. And then my traffic started to go up from there. I started to understand what it was like to potentially partner with other companies. And AdSense was like the first thing that I did to generate an income on that website. AdSense is a tool from Google that you can add code on your website that will automatically generate ads when people come to your website based on the content that's on that page. So once I found out about that within this course, I added AdSense onto my homepage. And then I checked like a few hours later and I saw that I had made like a dollar 18, $1 and 18 cents. And it was the coolest feeling in the world the, the, to, to know that I had built this thing, you know, and obviously it took a long time to build and write all this content. It wasn't an overnight thing for sure. Um, but to know that I just added code and all of a sudden I see a dollar 18 cents in my account. I mean, it's not very much. I can find that, uh, you know, in the floor of my car, but to see that it actually happened gave me hope and it kept me uh, going and it, it, it helped me want to figure out how to do this even better. So that AdSense income started to grow from, you know, one to $2 a day to two to $5 a day and then $10 a day, $20 a day. And I ended up making like $40 a day before I even considered writing an ebook. It was when I was invited to a mastermind group meeting. So the people who in this, who are in this course, um, Jeremy actually moved to San Diego, which is where I was from. And then he said, hey, if anybody's around the San Diego or Southern California area, I'm gonna be meeting at this restaurant at this time, you, sh you should all come by. And I saw that that restaurant was just like a mile from my home. So I start to get, you know, sweaty palms. And I'm like, should I go? Like, I'm really nervous. I don't know if this is like my place. And the reason I'm nervous is just because in my nature, I'm a really shy person. I like hiding behind the keyboard. I was a little scared to go out there and I didn't know what I was going to say, but I decided to go anyway. I knew it'd be good for me. And plus I knew Jeremy from the podcast. I didn't know anybody else who would go there, but I went anyway. I was a little bit late. I remember rolling up to Panera Bread in Mira Mesa, California, which is in San Diego. And there's like a group of like 10 guys who are sitting around this table outside of Panera. And I get really scared. I almost consider move, like just going back because I just who are like these people are, you know, have established businesses. I have no idea what idea I'm doing. Like I'm not going to be able to contribute anything, but I go and I park and I walk up anyway. And then I introduce myself and everybody like they're in the middle of doing their introductions. And I just start listening to everybody and what they're doing. And they're doing these amazing things in different niches from fitness to education. And they're making thousands of dollars a month already. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I don't even belong here. And then by the time my turn came around, I just briefly said, hey, my name is Pat Flynn. I have this website that I just started. It's about helping people pass an exam in the architecture industry. And um, it's making a few dollars here and there with AdSense. And they're like, okay, that's cool. That's a great start. I remember what it was like when I started. It's a little scary, but they were giving me some good encouragement, which was great. And then one person asked, hey, Pat, like how much traffic do you get to the website? And I said, well, I get a, I get a few thousand. And they were like, oh, that's pretty good. Like a few thousand per month. Like we could work with that. Like maybe we can come up with some, some ideas. And I'm like, no, I actually get a few thousand per day. And then there was this long pause and people were like, wait, you get a thousand or a few thousand hits per day. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, are you selling them anything? And I said, I don't know how to do that. What, what do I even sell? I have these ads and that's it. And that's when Jeremy said, you have to write an ebook. And my initial thought was, what is an ebook? I have no idea what that means. How do I even get it up and running or together? So there was like a 20 minute discussion from all these guys contributing to talk about my, possibly my opportunities, my options. And so basically what came out of that meeting was, I was going to write an ebook and then I was going to sell it. I didn't know how I was going to sell it. They said that they, they had tools available, but don't even worry about that right now to just get the book done. And they were right because that just lit my fire. I mean, I got the book done in about a month and a half. I took a lot of the content that was on the website. I put it into a Word document. Then I finished it off and it was about 80 pages. I turned it into a PDF and then I had this thing and I was like, all right, I have this thing. I know it's helpful. Um, what do I do with it? So that's when I went back to the mastermind group online in the forums and I said, all right, guys, I finished this thing. Like we talked about, what do I do from here? And they gave me all the tools I needed to automate this thing. Uh, I used a tool called the eJunkie, uh, which I wouldn't recommend anymore, but it was great back in the day for uploading a, a, a digital file and then getting back in return a link that you can put on your website or a button that people can buy and then go through your PayPal account to pay you. And then they get delivered that ebook and that's kind of how it all started. And 
it, it's interesting to me. So you get laid off, you moved back to your parents' house trying to save money. And then you invest in this uh, sort of online course thing. What mm-hmm. was that decision like deciding to go ahead and, and put that money forward during a time when you are short on money? I mean, I wasn't short of money yet. I had $97 a month for, or $97 a month was the payment plan for this course. And for me, that was worth the education I was going to get back because I had already learned so much for free from these these guys. And that's kind of what taught me the power of serving first. These guys taught me a lot in these podcasts and I wanted to give back to them for what they were teaching me because I was starting to see results. I was seeing AdSense income come in uh, already. Um, and so I, I, I knew that paying this monthly um, fee was going to be something I could do. Now, I also knew that I didn't have to do it forever. I wasn't going to be locked in for good. But um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't a tough decision for me because I had already learned about who these people were and had learned so much. And um, I was definitely immediately shown that I was going to get this value back in return. I know when I was first starting online businesses. And I, I've heard Patrick McKenzie, uh, Patio 11 is what a lot of people know him as talking about his first days of uh, making money online and, and thinking uh, that he didn't even know if it was legal to, uh, to, to, you know, put up an ebook or something like that and, and sell it. Was there anything like that? It seems like it's a leap for some people to even realize that, they put that code on their their website and they see that dollar or five dollars in AdSense and that that's that's real. Was there any sort of a, a leap that you had to make there coming from architecture where you're sitting at a desk and you have certain ranks that you have to move up through to just having money kind of magically come to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I also knew that it wasn't like magic that was making this happen. It was the work that I put in up front to, to help generate that income. So it wasn't like magic to me because there was hard work behind it, but it was a, a lot of, there were a lot of leaps along the way. I mean, the leap to um, actually consider this as my new path was huge because I had just been conditioned to believe that architecture was right for me. Um, and this is something completely new and, and, and just com- completely different. Um, the, the, the biggest leap I mean, not when the AdSense income came in because I saw other people making AdSense income and I saw their checks online and all those kinds of things. I researched a lot of people who were making a lot of money through AdSense, some people $100,000 plus a month. So I knew that that was okay. And plus it was a service coming from Google, but it was when I sold my ebook that I had the biggest leaps. And I remember when I launched my ebook, it was like coming in on the last week of my work before I was terminated. And I, I, I finished the ebook, I got it up on eJunkie, I got the link and I put it on my website and it was like 1.30 or two o'clock in the morning. And I put it up on the website and I'm like, okay, it's up there. Like people can buy it. I actually bought it myself just to make sure it was working. I think a lot of us do that. And yeah. um, so it worked. And I went to bed thinking that I'd wake up in the morning and then there, may, there might be sales. But I had to go to work at 6 a.m. to take the train to get to work by 8.30. So I woke up at... Uh, 5 a.m., three hours later, I was tired, but I checked my email, no sales. But I realized that that was only three hours ago that I put up that 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 button. And also that, uh, you know, nobody's gonna buy lead exam material at two in the morning. So I take the train to work, I go there and I check my email immediately at my desk. I'm not doing any work for this architecture firm anymore. I'm basically just building my business that while I'm there, um, no sales. And I get a little deflated. I'm like, okay, well, this is way in over my head. Like, why, why didn't I even try? Like, there's probably gonna be no sales at all. But then at 8.40 a.m., 10 minutes later, I get an email and it says notification of payment received and it's from PayPal. And it's for my very first sale. And it was $19.99 minus, you know, a dollar or something for PayPal fees. And I saw it in my account. My account was bigger and I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this just happened. I got so excited, but within 10 seconds, I started to have those feelings like you were talking about, like, what if this person asks for a refund? What if they don't like it? What if this, like, is this even something that I'm allowed to do? I have no idea. I kind of just jumped in and, and trying to figure it out. And I was starting to hyperventilate. I was just, this is something completely brand new to me. I had no idea how to react to it. So I went outside for a walk. And when I got back to my desk, you know, 15 minutes later, I saw that there was another email from PayPal. I had made another 20 bucks while I was out on a walk. And that's really what showed me the power of this. Like I had set up these systems ahead of time. 
And then it was all about, okay, well, where else can I add these links on my website? What are the top pages on my website that people are visiting? I can add links at the very top of those posts so people can see them. Um, I can add banner ads on the sidebar and all these other things to help market that book because I saw it worked. And um, fast forward to May of 2009. So I was making nearly $30,000 a month at this point. I had added new products like an audio guide. I had increased the price uh, and all kinds of things. So things were going very well. And then I got a letter from the United States Green Building Council or actually a uh, attorney that represented them. And it was a letter that was basically a cease and desist letter telling me to stop what I was doing. And this is when I was like, wow, okay, maybe what I was doing wasn't okay. And I'm, I'm just gonna retreat. Like I just wanted to, to curl up into a ball and just kind of like float away because I just couldn't handle it. Um, eventually I got over like the, the first initial reaction and I called an attorney to figure this out because I needed to. And then they basically told me that the problem wasn't what I was doing. It was the fact that I had the, the word lead in my domain name because my original domain name wasn't actually greenexamacademy.com. That's my second one. My initial one was in the lead.com, L-E-E-D. Oh, I know. So that's did. probably why that, that, that URL doesn't redirect. Well, to- here's the story about that. I actually did a 301 redirect and that allowed me to keep the rankings in Google for the new website, greenexamacademy.com. So we basically copied the website over to greenexamacademy.com and used a, what's a technical thing called a 301 permanent redirect. Um, I didn't do that. I had to hire somebody to do that. And then I got another letter from the United States Green Building Council a month later that said, hey, you know, we said you couldn't use this and that includes redirect. So you have to actually uh, shut down in the lead.com. Now, the thing I worried about was if I were to do that, that somebody else would grab that domain name because it was a popular thing. I didn't want it to just expire. So if you go to in the lead.com right now, I think it's it's a different kind of redirect that basically says, oh, this page is missing. It, it doesn't exist. Um, but luckily I had done the 301 redirect beforehand to tell Google that the new website was gonna be at greenexamacademy.com. So any old links would redirect to the new one. Um, but if you go to in the lead.com, it should say something like, yeah, it basically says, I went and looked at it yesterday. It said something like that it, it wasn't there. And I was kind of wondering like, oh, why doesn't this redirect? That's, that's weird. But yeah, that yeah. makes sense. We're going to take a quick break. I'm really thrilled to have Skillshare as a sponsor of Love Your Work. I know that so many listeners out there are curious types like me that never want to stop learning. That's why Skillshare is great for you. It's just like it sounds. You share skills or people share skills with you. It's an online learning community with over 17,000 classes in design business, many more things. You can learn street photography, business analytics, social media marketing. And you know that I'm a big Seth Godin fan. You're probably a big Seth Godin fan too. Skip the Netflix tonight. Take Seth's course. It's called the Modern Marketing Workshop. You and I can walk into any business school in this country, to any marketing class in this country, and that's what's being taught. That what's being taught is a framework to think about what you do when you have something you want to market. And this course is about something else. This course says, market what works. With Skillshare, you get unlimited access to Seth's class and then also all the other classes for one low monthly price. You never have to pay per class again. Skillshare is giving my listeners a month of unlimited access absolutely free. Go to Skillshare.com slash love your work to redeem your free month. Keep in mind that Skillshare helps keep this podcast free. So please, if they interest you, make sure you go to Skillshare.com slash love your work. So that way they know that you heard it here. I hope you're enjoying this free episode of Love Your Work. Not only do our sponsors help keep the show free, but so do our Love Your Work elite members. You could call it a donation, but it's really much more than that. When you join Love Your Work Elite, You get early access to episodes and ad-free interviews, and you even get access to master classes with people like Noah Kagan, as well as live monthly office hours hangouts with me and other folks in the community. Our goal is to get 3% of you, just 3% of you as Love Your Work Elite members that will help us keep making the show, keep making it free, keep the back catalog free for everyone too. I know that you're mulling it over. You really just are better off deciding and taking action right now. You'll have that mental space left over to think about something else, and you'll just plain feel good to be a bigger part of making this show. So go to lywelite.com to learn more and join. And if you're not in the right context, as David Allen would say, to do that right now, just go ahead and set yourself a reminder. That's lywelite.com. I'll see you there. 
Uh, now, what about, you know, architecture is a prestigious profession that has uh, a long history. And I mean, was there any of your identity wrapped up in that profession? And was letting go of that difficult in deciding that you were going to pursue online business full time? I mean, at first, like I said, the first thing I wanted to do after I got let go was not get into anything else but architecture. I tried to see how I can get back into it. And it just wasn't letting me back in. And I got so frustrated with the fact that I had devoted five years of my life to school for architecture. I had done so much more than I was asked of within the world of architecture in my career, at my work. And I still got let go. I got so fed up about that, that I made the decision internally that, you know what? I need to do something that's going to allow me to have the most control over my life. And so actually the leap wasn't that hard. Um, yes, there's a lot. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me was like pleasing my father because he was somebody who worked for the same job for, for 40 years and then retired. And he was the one who paid my way through school. So to hear him tell me when I told him that I was let go, that I should just go back to school and go get a master's degree. That was tough because that, conflicted with where I wanted to go based on my experience giving this industry everything that I could. But I also knew that he was right. He's always right. And that was the hardest part. But I told him, I have to try this out because I have this opportunity in front of me. It seems to be going really well. I don't know how long it's going to last. I can always go back to school later. And I'm thankful that I had his support with that. And of course, now having him see all the success that I've had since then, he's definitely one of my biggest fans, which is which is awesome. Um, I think what really got me to say yes to this new path much faster than many people might think was the fact that I was getting recognized for my work. I have my fingerprint on dozens of different buildings in the US from the plans that I've done and the project, management's, uh, project management that, I, that I've done for those projects. Um, but nobody will ever know that. Like if I, if I were to ask you like who built the home that you live in or anybody else out there listening right now, who built the home that you raise your family in, that you break bread with people in, that you sleep in, most people, 99.99% of people do not know who the architect is behind the homes that they live in, let alone all the buildings that they experience every single day. But here I was helping people pass this little exam in this little niche in the architecture industry. And I was getting thanked by name. I was getting recognized in the industry. I was getting handwritten thank you notes from people who said that I was able to help them get a promotion. I was able to help them get a raise. I was able to help them in some way, shape or form. And they were calling me by name. Thank you, Pat. Dear Pat, thank you, Pat. And that to me was the biggest thing. The fact that I could have an impact in a person's life in a direct way through the work that I was doing online. And that is what allowed me to make this transition a lot easier. And back to October 2008, you make that first $8,000 or so. You set up smartpassiveincome.com and then you immediately start sharing your income reports. Um, mm -hmm. Where did you get the idea to do that? And, and was there any hesitation to do that? Because I could definitely see a person having some fears and reservations about sharing exactly their income all the time every month. Yeah, I mean, that was something that I never understood. I would even, you know, sh like ask people at my work um, in architecture, I'd be like, hey, like, where are you at right now with your income? And they'd be so secretive of it. And I didn't understand that. Like, I guess I kind of understand it. But, you know, it made me wonder if that person who I was asking was making more than me, but also working less hard. And it just, to me, total transparency just made complete sense because then we would know all the answers. And so when I was getting into teaching people this stuff that I was doing online, I was like, okay, well, I want to share everything. And then it was actually not my idea to put income online. There was another person who was in the affiliate marketing world who was doing this. And it was just so fascinating to me to see that I could actually see down to the product, down to the penny, what this person was making money from. It made me want to build, it, it made me want to trust him that, that much more. And so I decided to just give it a shot and try it out for just that first month because I knew that if people saw that, they would believe me. They would see that, oh, wow, this actually happened. And here are the uh, screenshots and here are the things that like actually did happen. I'm not just like blowing smoke. I'm actually showing you that this is really something that could happen. And to me, as somebody who is going into this world and teaching them, I, want, I needed to show them this proof because that was the other thing. There were so many people teaching online business and marketing who didn't have any proof, who were probably just regurgitating stuff from other people here I had real life experience and I wanted to show people the real life results 
from that real life experience to kind of walk the walk, not just talk the talk. But even after that first month, people, the few people who found my website and who I shared it with were like, oh my gosh, like this is amazing that you're sharing this. Like you gotta keep doing this and we can see your progress and it's just so inspirational. Um, so I, I decided to continue it for a few more months just to kind of see what the reaction was like. And that more than anything has helped my website grow in the beginning and to help me differentiate myself from the other people who are out there teaching this stuff, but not really showing proof behind it. Um, and so, yes, I mean, I know also at the same time, like anybody can say anything online in terms of numbers. First of all, that's that's illegal. But also, secondly, like I also share the lessons that are in and around those numbers. Like it's one thing to just share how much money I've made, but it's another thing to share. Here's what happened to make that work. Here's here's how those numbers came about. And since 2008, I've been creating my monthly income reports. Um, there are dozens of them and they each tell a story. They, some of them, the income goes up. Some of them, the income goes down, but there's always lessons involved so that people can learn from from this and not just, it's, it's, it's like my worry in the beginning was, oh, it's, it's gonna be like, people thinking that I'm just cocky and saying like how cool I am. And that's not what it's about, but I need to show those numbers to show proof, but it's the lessons behind those numbers that really matter. Yeah. And I've seen that they have gotten more and more detailed. Sometimes they do go up. Sometimes they do go down. This latest one is around a quarter of a million dollars, if I remember right. So you're probably not going to head back to school anytime soon. Um, I think Mm, definitely not. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's interesting to me that you ended up in this profession that is so like you were saying with architecture, it is very hierarchical. I mean, you have to keep taking exams and everything, and it really takes a long time before you're an architect. And then you ended up in this thing where you are totally free. And it sounds like that switch, it wasn't that hard for you to let go of the the identity of being an architect. No, I mean, that's what I went to school for. And I know I needed to adjust. And it's not like that I'm ever going to just forget that. I mean, I wouldn't have gone into the lead exam space if it weren't for architecture. And I felt like that that was just the next stepping point. But even with the first few months making thousands of dollars with the Green Exam Academy website, or again, back then it was in the lead, um, I still was kind of in the back of my head, not quite sure if this was going to be something that was going to last a long time or if it was something that I actually wanted to do. I still had, I mean, I went to school for five years for architecture. I love architecture. I still love it. And I do miss it sometimes. I miss the art of architecture, not necessarily the 90 hour weeks, but it wasn't until I think it was April, April, 2009. I got a call from my boss, the one who had actually told me I was going to be let go. And he calls me back and he goes, Hey Pat, like, how are you? I hope things are okay. And I'm like, yeah, actually things are going pretty good. Um, but he wanted to offer me a position at a new firm that he set up. He brought a few of my coworkers with him, the same clients that I was working with. He took them with him too. So I would just come right back on board with the, with the jobs that I was familiar with. And then he also offered me a corner office, a pay raise slightly, and then also a year's rent for free to come back to Irvine, California to, to be with him and, and my coworkers. And it wasn't three seconds until I said, you know what? No, no, thank you. I'm good. And then after that conversation, I thought about my answer and I was like, am I crazy? Like, that's an amazing offer. But no, I don't want to go down that route. The fact that I had answered so quickly told me inside and internally that I knew that this is the, this entrepreneurial path is, is, is for me. And then knowing that I wanted to start a, fi- a family and seeing my income grow, even like while I was asleep, like that told me that uh, allowed me the freedom to spend my time where I wanted to, that I could build these systems up front to help pay me back in return over time. Um, that's what it really told me that, okay, this is the, like after that conversation, that's how I knew that this is, this is my new path. I think if you ask most people to describe Pat Flynn, they'll mention your transparency, they'll mention your authenticity, and you can see it in that you starting off, you were not speaking, trying to speak from a place of authority. You were just sharing your experience and learning. Actually, you weren't even trying to share it with, uh, with the whole world like you actually were. Um, and even sharing your income reports, it doesn't sound like you had a lot of reservations about that. Did that all just come totally natural to you? Or were there any uh, transformations that had to take place for any of that to happen? You know, a lot of the transformation happens after these experiments such as putting my income report up. These are all things that I just wanted to try and see what happened. And based on the reaction that I get back, that's what just helps me decide what it is that I should do moving forward. So putting up greenexamacademy.com and launching an ebook, like obviously the reaction to that has been great. So I put more focus into that. 
with the income reports that really seemed to uh, leave a mark with people. So I decided to continue on with that. So, I mean, that's what I do now. I mean, even since 2008, when I started Smart Passive Income, I've built new businesses. I actually built several of them publicly, like my security guard training website, which was a little niche site I built in 2010 that still continues today to make a couple thousand dollars a month. And I shared with people the exact steps that I did to actually build that from like, keyword research in terms of why I selected that niche to building the website, to getting content on there, to actually generating an income from it. Same thing in 2012 when I started foodtrucker.com and all these new things that I'm doing now, getting into the software space. Again, just sharing everything has been something that I've found to be the pattern of something that actually helps me not only stand out from everybody else out there who's holding their best information behind, but I found that like the perfect equation for, for success in this world is serving first. Serve first and you will be rewarded. Your earnings are a byproduct of how well you serve your audience. And part of that serving is just allowing people to see everything and everything that's going on. And plus nowadays, especially with social media, like they can get an even deeper look into who you are because it's people who connect with people online. It's not business to business, it's not business to customer, it's people to people. And sharing this transparency, sharing bits and pieces of my personal life with people too on social media allows people to see that I'm a real person with a real life who you can become friends with online, who you can trust. And that trust is the most important thing when it comes to any transactions that might happen in the future. So in the beginning, sharing the income reports was kind of an experiment. And I know that for myself, it's kind of exciting sometimes when you start something and and you have a... Um in, in, what you're, what's in your head is what Seth Godin would say, uh, this might not work. Is, is that something that you find yourself l looking for often is things that might not work that you can try? If I'm living life and there are, there's nothing in my head that tells me, well, this might not work, then I'm not trying hard enough. Um, there needs to be something in my life that I'm always nervous about, scared of, something that could fail. That's how I can make sure that I can continue to grow. Because even if I fail, even if those things don't work out, it's still a lesson to be learned so I can adjust and adapt and move forward and pivot if I need to. And so, yeah, I'm always looking for that. I'm always looking for that fear, that thing that's going to, you know, get me nervous next. Um, for a while, it was getting on video with YouTube. And then it was uh, podcasting and getting that up. That took a long time to figure out. And then uh, getting on stage. Some, the thing that I was like most afraid of, I'm finally here and now doing it regularly and I'm enjoying it. I still get nervous. Um, and then later on selling courses on smart passive income. And now I'm looking for your bigger and even better things that make me nervous because yeah, you're right. Like if nothing is there to tell me that, well, I might not actually work, that this might not actually work. Well, then I'm falling into an area of complacency and complacency is scary because you're just kind of settling. And for me, I'm always somebody who's always looking for, for something new that can um, not just get me excited again, but can help me grow and help others too at the same time. Well, so what didn't work? A lot of things. Gosh, there were so many things that didn't work. I remember when I built Green Exam Academy, I was selling this ebook. I had actually spent uh, some of my money that I was making on building a internal WordPress-based course platform. I was actually gonna create an online course to help teach people the lead exam stuff. And I spent about $3,000 building a customized plugin to allow for some of the pages to be behind a paywall and a login and username type, type of situation. There are plugins that do this now automatically, but that didn't exist back then. And I had built the thing and then I got so scared of actually getting on video that it never happened. So I had spent $3,000 on something that I never did. Um, later on in 2010, after Smart Passive Income took off for a while and I started being, uh, building an audience there, a couple of my friends launched WordPress plugins to their audiences and had done very well making over six figures within a week after launching. And I said, wow, I can maybe do the same thing. I have this audience on SPI. I can build a WordPress plugin and sell it to them in the same way. And so I had found a developer and a project that was supposed to take Oh gosh, six weeks and about $6,000 ended up taking six months and about $15,000. And the saddest part about this whole situation is after finally getting my plugin idea finished into the point where it was workable and sellable, I shared it with a couple friends, colleagues, people in my mastermind groups and a couple super fans that I had. And the reaction that I got was not what I expected. They said, oh, well, Pat, this is, this is kind of cool, but you know, it's not really anything I would pay for. And I felt so crushed because I had spent so much time and effort and sweat and just stressing over this for so long that to, to hear them say that was just crushing because I never, never even ended up selling that thing because it just wasn't good enough. And I made a lot of mistakes, but it was a $15,000 uh, lesson 
for me. A lot of lessons learned in that in that sequence of events. For me, number one, the biggest lesson was chasing the money. I saw my friends making money in one way and I tried to do the same thing. Having that be the primary motivator was probably the biggest reason why I failed because it allowed for all these other mistakes that happened. It forced me to kind of rush into getting into a situation to find a developer who uh, was online offering these services, but not really knowing exactly even what I wanted to build. I just knew that I wanted something to happen. But when you work with a developer, I quickly understood that you need to give them as much information as you can up front so that there's less room for um, you know, having them be creative with that work. You need to give them as much detail as possible. And for me, that was the biggest problem. I didn't communicate what I wanted because I didn't even know what I wanted exactly. And so the developer was t- kind of making stuff up and then they'd give me an iteration back and I'd be upset because it wouldn't be what I thought it was gonna be. But of course it wasn't his fault, it was my fault. Uh, so that was a big lesson. Another big lesson in that whole situation was realizing that, wow, I could have had conversations with people about this idea up front before hiring a developer to make this thing better and to, or just quickly figure out that this is something I shouldn't actually spend money on. And that's where this whole, uh, will it fly sort of, uh, that's, that was, uh, I was going to say, second. this must be the genesis behind your latest book. Will it fly? It, it, it is partly that. Yes, absolutely. Because, you know, if I had taken my own advice that I teach now and had validated these ideas up front, I would have saved that much more money and stress. Um, the saddest part was like, after having these conversations with my colleagues about this plugin that I had, they all said, oh, you know, this is okay, but what if it did this instead? Or, ooh, it'd be better if it did this or this or this or that. Well, I didn't have any more money to spend to make it this, 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 or that. Um, so if I had those conversations up front, I would have obviously known what to do better. And it would allow me to, to, to plug in those holes and to get holes poked into it so I can just make it something better that I can then give to the developers. So yeah, th- those were just a couple of the dozens, hundreds of failures that have happened since getting started. But I like those failures. I want to fail fast because that teaches me what to do next or what not to do next. Um, I walked away from software for a while as a result of that, but I got back into it, but I got back into it in a smarter way using a lot of those examples. And that's where my smart podcast player came from. So smartpodcastplayer.com is a web-based, beautiful a uh, player that was custom built for myself and then distributed via a WordPress plugin now. And that has made uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's thousands of users who pay monthly to get access to that thing. And it's very, very successful. We've had people want to buy it. Uh, so taking the smarter, slower, but better approach in terms of software development definitely worked out. But I think it's a blessing in disguise, those these lessons and failures um, for sure. Thanks so much for this conversation. There's so much more that I could ask you. I'll have to wait till a round two or something like that sometime. Yeah. Um, do you have a final message to kind of sum up what we were talking about today? Yeah, I mean, I think a big lesson that kind of ties everything in together is just to just get started. You're not gonna know all the steps. You're going to likely make a lot of mistakes or even fail completely, but that's how you grow. That's how you figure things out. Um, you know, it's really hard to predict the future, but a surefire way to do that is to do nothing because when you do nothing, you get nothing. So do something, just get started. Even if you don't know what you're doing, put yourself out there, figure things out. You're going to learn along the way. And once you get started, it's just like, you know, it's, it's just like physics, right? Once you get the ball rolling it starts to continue to actually s- to roll, the hardest part is just kind of taking that thing that's at rest and, and getting it to get going. Pat, you already have a lot of fans. Hopefully you'll get a few more fans from this podcast. Where can they get more of you? Uh, you can find me at smartpassiveincome.com or you can follow me on Instagram uh, or Twitter at Pat Flynn. You can say hi to me there. I'd love to know that you listen to this. All right. Thank you so much, Pat. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Pat Flynn, and I hope it inspires you to share what you learn and help others while you're at it. Again, please do say hello to Pat on Twitter at Pat Flynn. I was really glad to have him on the show. He's probably never heard of my show. Let's let him know just how many of you listeners there are. For more on making progress as you learn, listen to Max Temkin of Cards Against Humanity on episode 45. Max tells the amazing story of how a little game that he and his friends made ended up becoming a cultural sensation. The most important thing for cards, like looking back on it, was that we didn't know what we were doing and that liberated us to figure everything out for ourselves. And that process of figuring everything out from first principles for ourselves was so important. That was everything. Like we did everything in our own way because we didn't know the quote unquote the right way to do it. Again, Max Temkin is on episode 45. 
And if you're a Love Your Work Elite member, check out the uncut bonus content for this episode. Pat shares details on getting a self-published book onto the shelves of Barnes & Noble. And he also talks about building a podcast with a million downloads a month. And so all the stuff I was learning and we just didn't give ourselves enough time ahead of time to publish. I mean, we were working really last minute. Um, this next book that I'm coming out with, which is still in its first draft, um, that will likely be handled a little bit better. You can join Love Your Work Elite at lywelite.com. Is Love Your Work helping you crack the code on fulfilling work? If so, I could really use your help. For the show to continue and to continue being free for everyone, it needs your support. One way you can help is to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Apple podcast ratings help too. Just go to kadavi.net slash Apple, click on write a review and click on the star rating. You don't even have to write a review. It just takes a couple of seconds. You can also join Love Your Work Elite hosted on Patreon. You could call it a donation, but it's really much more than that. You'll get your own personal RSS feed with early access to episodes and bonus content. You'll also get a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at lywelite.com. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by top Love Your Work elite members such as Arif Akhtar and Ed Stanfield of startwithclarity.com. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. The theme music for the show is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc.